Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh for Yahshua. Praise Yahweh for Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 They that hunger, hunger and thirst for righteousness, for righteousness, they shall be filled. Don't you know that they that hunger, hunger and thirst for righteousness, for righteousness, they shall be filled. Yahshua said that they that hunger, hunger and thirst for righteousness, for righteousness, they shall be filled. They shall be filled. They shall be filled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise Yahweh for the mighty works he has done. We praise Yahweh for sending his only begotten son. We thank Father Yahweh for calling us as his firstborn son. And we thank Father Yahweh for all his provisions and all that are in awe of all his decisions. We bring greetings from the congregation of Yahweh, 342 Sylvania Avenue, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15210. We pray that all would come to the knowledge of the truth, would believe that Father Yahweh sent Yahshua into the world to save his people from their sins and to believe by faith in him. We praise Father Yahweh that Yahshua can cleanse us from sin. Many have come to realize that all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and that none of us can do anything without him. The world may not know him and neither can it see that it must become saved through Yahshua the Hamashiach, Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Our faith in him and obedience to Father Yahweh's commandments help us and cause us to be the children of Yahweh, as he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called our first four parents out of the land of Egypt. He's calling us today, the same people, out of the world of sin. And as he draws us unto salvation, making us free by the shed blood of Yahshua, we must speak the same thing and we must have the same mind even as Yahshua. Yahshua did not want and did not disobey not one commandment Father Yahweh gave. And so there are so many things that happen in one's life that causes them to wonder and be in awe to catch their breath and rethink what has been taught. We all must reach a certain plateau and Father Yahweh is still not finished with us yet and it causes us to be thankful to know that you have been purified to be part of this great family. Over the years, many frustrations, questions, and decisions are arise to what is happening in your life and in our lives. And we strive to continue to be humble and, and to humble ourselves before Yahweh's mighty hand, thanking him for his outstretched arm. We thank Father Yahweh for his keeping power. We thank him for his love. We thank him for his mercy. We thank him for his extended grace upon our lives. We realize and thank you, Father Yahweh, for your keeping power. We thank you for what you do and how you do what you do. We know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us in judgment is condemned. Father Yahweh, I ask you to move by your power, by your spirit, today as never before. Father, I'm praying that all things will be well, even in this place. I thank you, Father Yahweh, for your keeping power, and I magnify your name. Thank you for sending Yahshua into this world. Hallelujah. 
and, and even in his pre-existence, before he was born as a baby, born from a woman and born under the animal sacrificial law system. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your extended grace. And Father Yahweh, as we continue to walk by faith and not by sight, we thank you, Father. It is your purpose that you have called those that you're calling. And we thank you, Father, for showing us how you called our foreparents out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. We praise you, Father, for showing us your feast days, your Sabbaths. Father, we thank you for all your blessings, your commandments that you have given to us. We thank you for allowing us to walk by faith and not by sight. Father, we bless your name and thank you for giving us the whole armor to put on, starting with girding ourselves with your truth. Hallelujah, your word is truth. We thank you, Father, for your mercy, for your mercy endures forever. We pray, Father Yahweh, that as we continue to walk by faith, that you will do in us, for us, through us, and around us the things that need to be done. Father Yahweh, we'll be so careful to give you the praise and the honor. Hallelujah. For we give it to you in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, your son, our savior, our master, and our soon coming king. We praise you. We love you. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to come back to this place to do this message this morning. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, for your keeping power. We thank you for all those that you're opening their eyes, that you're unstopping their ears, that you're breaking up the fallow ground of their heart. We pray, Father Yahweh, and know that as you have spoken, everything that you have spoken shall come to pass. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We praise you for what you do and for how you do what you do. In the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we love you. Hallelujah. We praise you and we honor you in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. 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 Bring you greetings from the congregation of Yahweh. 342 Sylvania Avenue in the Bell Suver area, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15210. If this is your first time watching this message, we use the holy names of our Heavenly Father and His Son, and even we say Yashua for us. You may say Israel in the scripture, but as Father Yahweh called us out of darkness and He called our foreparents out of the land of Egypt, we just praise Father Yahweh for His keeping power and we thank Him for sending Yahshua to represent Him and yet to save us from our sins. We praise Father Yahweh for all his mighty acts toward the children of men. And as we are obedient, hallelujah, to his commandments, then he blesses us with all the things that we have need of, food and clothing and water and shelter. And we praise him that our bodies are the temples for the Holy Spirit. And this program is called As It Pleases Father Yahweh. And so we want to just look at some things in the scripture and realize that as Father Yahweh called us, and as he's calling many today, and many are waking up, those dry bones are coming together. The flesh is coming on them. The flesh is coming alive, not dried up and dead, but alive. We thank Father Yahweh for what he's done, hallelujah, for what he's doing and for what he shall do in the lives of his children. And we pray that as we go through this message and go through this lesson and look at the scripture that you will see what you need to see, that you will hear what you need to hear, and that you will be at a place, hallelujah, to obey the commandments that Father Yahweh has given us, and especially the ones that we definitely can do right now while we are in another land other than the land that Father Yahweh promised our foreparents, Abraham, Yazak, and Yaakov. We thank Father Yahweh for his blessing upon our lives, and he is just showing us what he wants us to know and allowing us to be obedient, hallelujah, to all of the commandments that he has given us. And when we get in the kingdom, all of his commandments are going to be kept just as he has given them. So we thank Father Yahweh. Again, I bring you greetings from the congregation of Yahweh, 342 Sylvania Avenue. And if you have a question while you're going, uh, while you're watching this message, you may call 412-441-3894 or 412-298-0139. Listen, many people can't get through, but keep trying and yet come to the congregation. 
As I shared, this message is called, As It Pleases Father Yahweh. And if we really think about some of the things that the scriptures have said, and I pray that you have your Bibles, your pencils, and your paper, or a pen, that you may write down the scriptures that we go over so that you may know what Father Yahweh's word says. And as this message is called, As It Pleases Father Yahweh. When he called our foreparents out of the land of Egypt, and you find those scriptures all the way in the book of Exodus. Many people are not reading all the way back in the front, but I'm encouraging everyone to read from Genesis or Bereshit, if you understand the Hebrew language, and read all the scriptures, see what it says, and then go back and study, see what it does say. And yet, as I shared, as Father Yahweh called our foreparents out of the land of Egypt. Father Yahweh had called Moshe to um, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go and that they may serve me. And yet as we look at the scripture, then we know many things happen. And yet we want to recognize that Father Yahweh um, sent Moshe and um, even when Moshe went to Pharaoh, and said to him, uh, as we read in um, Exodus chapter 5, it says, and I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, and afterward, Moshe and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus saith Yahweh, father of Yahshua, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is Yahweh that I should obey his voice to let Yahshua you might see Israel, Yahshua, people named after Yahweh, to let them go. He said, I know not Yahweh, neither will I let Yahshua go. Listen, I know in a lot of cases, many people have not read the scriptures. We were given some titles. We were given some incorrect names sometimes. And yet, we, as we search the word, as I've been sharing in other messages, and even at the congregation, and even with the people that I meet. If there's something that we need to know, Father Yahweh is not going to allow us to be ignorant. He's going to show us what we need to know, what we need to do, when, how, where, who, and what. And so, as he told Moshe, he said, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. You know, so whatever Father Yahweh allows us and causes us to do, we have to do it as it pleases Father Yahweh. And we have to recognize this one thing, that even in Exodus 12, Father Yahweh, when he was getting ready to put the last plague upon the Egyptians because Pharaoh would not allow our foreparents to go. And yet, Father Yahweh had told uh, Pharaoh that he raised him up so that his power could be known and that his name could be known. And so in knowing that and seeing that, you know, when if we don't know who Father Yahweh is, if we don't know that we truly must obey his commandments by faith, by faith, because we don't see Father Yahweh, he is spirit. And yet if he indwells us by his spirit because of our faith today in Yahshua HaMashiach, then we have to realize that we truly must trust and obey because there is no other way. We must obey the commandments of Father Yahweh. And so as he is showing us what he wants us to do and he's calling us, we have to recognize that even he called our foreparents to keep the Passover. You know, I've been sharing over these uh, 20 some years, I've been sharing the different magazines that have been written concerning uh, Father Yahweh's word out of the scripture. This is a Passover magazine, and it is a do-it-yourself quiz, and yet as our foreparents were called to do the Passover, to put the blood on the upper and two side parts of the door, of the lintel of the door, we have to recognize Father Yahweh gave his instructions. And I've been sharing about Passover, I've been sharing about the Sabbath, and yet we must do it as it pleases Father Yahweh. And so Father Yahweh gave instructions that they were to keep the Passover. Sometime today people do what you call communion, 
and they do it in the afternoon and they do it once a month or they do the first Tuesday of the month or the second Tuesday of the month or whenever they want to. But Father Yahweh gave us a Passover and I'm praying that everyone will go through the scripture, read and see what it says so that they can do it as it pleases Yahweh. Anyway, Father Yahweh told them to take a lamb. Well, we're not doing animal sacrifices right now because Yahshua, Hamashiach, our Savior, is the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And so because of that, they had a lamb, and yet, and that's in the original Passover, and all the others until Yahshua came. He even ate the Last Supper. And, you know, I've said many times that I did not uh, <clears throat> bring in any matzah. This is a piece of matzah. Matzah, you can make it yourself. Sometimes we buy it, but you can make it yourself. It's some flour and some water and, and bake it. And it will, may not come out like this, but because um, this is uh, present, uh, formed and it comes out in an exact square because of the form that it's put in. And yet, sometimes ours might be round and yet it can be broken. And I'm gonna crack this. And so now I have two pieces in here. And so when you think about what matzah is, not the little round host, we want to take the matzah and eat it. And this was representing, even today, Yahshua's body. And the blood, and even the wine, represents Yahshua's blood. And if we recognize some of the songs that we sing about Yahshua's blood, it says, there's power, power in the precious blood of the lamb. Yahshua shed his blood on the tree at Golgotha. And because of that, all the way down to this year, 2019, which is thousands of years from the time that Yahshua died, and yet his blood still cleanses from sin. And if we recognize that Father Yahweh sent him and gave us the Passover, even in Matthew chapter 26, um, Father Yahweh gave the Passover for uh, Yahshua to keep, and he kept it. And as it says in the book of John chapter 1 verse 29, here is the Lamb of Yahweh which takes away the sins of the world. And so because we all have sinned, we all want to be cleansed from sin. We all want to be made right with Father Yahweh. We want to be reconciled to Father Yahweh. And so as you read, and sometimes people read, but their eyes may not see what Father Yahweh's word says. This message is not about Passover, but I just want to bring some things in so that you can see that there are some things that we need to do as it pleases Father Yahweh. So in Matthew chapter 26, it says, And it came to pass when Yahshua had finished all these things that he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. So even in what man calls the New Testament, the Passover was kept by Yahshua, by the 12 apostles, and even later, Shaul and all the people that were with him also kept the Passover. We want to recognize that whatever Father Yahweh gave, his, his laws are not done away with, and the same thing is to be done. And yet, Yahshua showed us how to do the Passover or the new covenant in his blood once he was gone. And even though the disciples, the apostles did not understand in the beginning what Yahshua was doing. But he said, you will understand later. And especially after they received the Holy Spirit and they began to think about all the things that he said and it came to their understanding why he did what he did. And so today, because we have all the scriptures that we have, and there are even more, and even though, listen, our foreparents did not have all the scriptures that we have, because as they were in slavery, and because the scriptures were written on scrolls, they did not necessarily have the scriptures like we have them today in a Bible. But we thank Father Yahweh for allowing us to be able to read. And yet, as it says in Matthew chapter 26, 
Again, you know that after two days is the feast of the Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed to be impaled, to be crucified, to be slain by some wicked people. And yet our foreparents chose a murderer and a thief to be released. But we must remember this one thing. Yahshua needed to die to show us how to live. He lived a righteous and a holy Kodesh life. He did not commit not one sin. And he's the only one who came in the flesh who has never sinned. Everyone else, all of us, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. And yet it is time for all of us to understand what Father Yahweh's word says and to do Yahweh's blessed will. Many things happen in the course of a day, in the course of a year, in a person's life. And yet, if we recognize the fact that Father Yahweh is calling us out of darkness into his marvelous light, we also are to keep Yahweh's feast days. And yet, as we look down in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, we see that after they had eaten the animal lamb uh, Passover, then Yahshua instituted the new covenant in his blood. He blessed, he blessed the bread, and yet the bread would have been sort of like um, the bread that we eat, but not uh, with leaven in it. And so a lot of times we have this bread, but then if you want a fluffier, I'm going to call it a fluffier kind of bread, then you just make it a little bit different. But uh, he, had, he had the matzah, and he blessed it, and he broke it. He said, take, eat, for this is representing my body, which is broken for you. And if you realize the things that happened to Yahshua on that uh, Passover day, hallelujah, then you will recognize that he truly did die. He shed blood from the crown of his head because they put a crown of thorns in his head. So the blood came down from his head. They put nails in his hands. This is the surrender position. This is the surrender position. If you take a telephone pole, take all the lines off of it before it is made pretty like a telephone pole, that would be the same kind of tree part trunk that Yahshua died on. And yet they put nails in his feet. And so if you think about all the things that happened to Yahshua, his blood, his blood ran down his hands. It ran down. And then even after he had died, the soldier pierced him in the side and out came blood and water. And so if you think about those things, then we have to recognize that Yahshua is the Lamb of Yahweh that takes away the sins of the world. And because he takes away the sins of the world, because our foreparents are, our, we are scattered as a people all around the world. Father Yahweh gave us his commandments. He said, if you do them, you shall be blessed. But if you don't do them, the curses shall fall upon you. So we needed a Passover lamb. We needed that lamb that could take away the sins of the world. And because of Yahshua and because of the Holy Spirit, our minds can change so that we can be totally obedient to the commandments of Yahweh. And as we walk toward that perfection, step by step by step, we become an are the people that Father Yahweh called. And so we want to recognize that this matzah, this matzah representing Yahshua's body, representing his body, and yet we want to recognize that as it represents his body and we keep the commandments of Yahweh, then we can uh, get closer and closer to Father Yahweh. The scripture says in Isaiah, chapter 55. Please turn with me. Isaiah chapter 55. When we look at the scripture and we realize that we want Father Yahweh, he is our heavenly father. Sometimes we didn't know him by his name, but as he is calling us and he's showing us many things. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6. And I'm going to read this. It says, seek, Yah seek you Yahweh while he may be found Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him turn unto Yahweh and he will have mercy upon him and 
be our father in Exodus chapter 422. Father Yahweh told uh, Moshe to tell Pharaoh that Yasharal, might say Israel, Yasharal is his firstborn son. It says, for he will upon, abundantly pardon. So we need to be forgiven of sins, but we must confess them. We must know what our sins are so that we don't keep doing them. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your thoughts. We don't think like Yahweh. When Father Yahweh gives us a commandment, he has a reason why. We may not understand it in the beginning. We may not ever understand it. But if he's given us something to do, we must understand why. And then yet, we must look for the fulfillment. Because as Father Yahweh says that he would pour out his spirit upon the sons and the daughters of Yasharal. And he did do that. And so in pouring out of his spirit, we have to look for the fulfillments as to when those things happen and even how. And so as we go in the book of Yoel, you might see a J, no J in Hebrew, Greek, Russian, or Latin. Um, the scripture says in chapter 2, it says, and it shall come to pass afterward, afterward, after many days. He said that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters. He was talking to our people and he was say, saying to our, our, our foreparents. He said, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your, um, your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall have vision. So he was going to pour his spirit out on the sons and the daughters. And so if we recognize that, then we have to recognize as well that in Acts chapter 2, he did that again. And so as we are looking at the fact that he is looking for us to be his people and to honor him, to obey him, to trust him with our whole heart, not to lean to our own understanding and in all our ways to acknowledge him so that he can direct our paths. And so as we look at uh, the prophets, when we look in the scriptures of the prophets, we see many things that the scriptures say. And if we understand that we need to do things as it pleases Father Yahweh, then we'll recognize that he will give us, hallelujah, the indwelling of the Ruach HaKadosh so that we can be what he wants us to be. In um, Acts chapter 5, he said he gives the Holy Spirit to them who obey him. So to obey him, that means you must believe. A lot of times, many of us were taught some things, and yet we began, as we began to read, to look through the scripture to see, are those things in the scripture? And sometimes we were told some things that weren't quite like it says, and yet when we begin to study, then Father Yahweh shows us what we need to do. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Our land is over in Jerusalem, in Canaan land. Not a land where people go and visit and visit and visit. And yet he said, yeah, Jerusalem would be trampled down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. And yet we know that many things are going to happen that need to allow Jerusalem to become like the Garden of Eden. Father Yahweh is going to make that place beautiful again. And the only people who are going to be there are those that will obey him and do the things as it pleases Father Yahweh. And if it's not what he said to do, then those people, listen, only those who have a heart, a spirit to be obedient to the commandments of Yahweh will be there. Anyone who has a, a rebellious spirit, a hard-hearted spirit, a, 
Listen, they are not going in Yahweh's kingdom. Father, Yahweh is preparing a people. And even as Yahshua said in John chapter 14, you know, many times they use this scripture during a funeral. But I want you to recognize one thing. Hallelujah. We are supposed to have memorial services, even as Yahshua died on a tree. And yet, when only two people who were his disciples were defiled. And that was because they went and asked for the body of Yahshua. And Yahshua was buried in a clean tomb, in a clean tomb. And so when we look at these scriptures, Yahshua says to us, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in me. You believe in Yahweh, rather. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many resting places. You might see mansions, but many resting places. We're looking to rest from our work and our labor. We're looking to be in the kingdom where we can, hallelujah, praise Father Yahweh for all that he has done for us. And so because of that, he said he goes to prepare a place for us. And if he's going to prepare a place for us, he will come again and receive us unto himself. And so we have to think about this one thing. A lot of people have been born into this world. We all were created and came forth at our own appropriate time. And yet in coming forth at our own appropriate time, hallelujah, there are things that we must do as it pleases Father Yahweh. And so, you know, when Yahshua was sharing some of the different things with him, Sometimes they would say, well, show us the Father. He said, have you been so long with me and you don't know who I am? And yet in the spirit realm, Father Yahweh will never be Father Yahweh himself, will never be flesh because Father Yahweh cannot die. When we come in fleshly form, then we can die. And because it's appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment, all of us are going to die at least one time. All of us, everyone born in this world is going to die at least one time. And yet, as we think about what Yahshua says to us, he said he was the way, he was the truth, and he was the life. And so in understanding that there had to be one who would show us who Father Yahweh is, who would show us how to live and how to live upright before him, then we have to be obedient to the commandments of Yahweh and do things as it pleases Father Yahweh. He is our creator, hallelujah. He is our heavenly father, hallelujah. He is our provider. And through Yahshua, whatever we have need of, he provides it for us. There are some things that sometimes people may not understand because they're spiritually discerned. And yet, as we look at the scripture and we keep reading and we pray and we fast, Father Yahweh will show us exactly what we need to know. And yet, as I said, Yahshua is, Yahshua is, Yahweh Shua is the way, the truth, and the life. Yahweh Shua means Yahweh is Savior. So when we really think about the fact that Yahshua came to show us the way, hallelujah. And if we walk in his footsteps, if we use him as an example before our eyes, then we will see through the scripture what we are supposed to do. And even as he came to heal the sick, many, you know, he laid his hand on them and they were recovered. They were healed. And so when you think about who he is, what he came to do, you know, they buried him in the middle of the week. In the middle of the week, he was in his tomb all day, what man calls Thursday or the fifth day, the sixth day, and the seventh day. Yahshua was raised on Shabbat, on the seventh day Sabbath. At the same time, he was put in, in the middle of the week, what man would call Wednesday. And yet we shouldn't even say those terms because Father Yahweh named them the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, and the sixth day, and the seventh day he called Shabbat. And so as we recognize what Father Yahweh is doing, then we have to do things as it pleases him. If we do things contrary, then we are not going to end up where we think we are. And I would like to say that 
even as Father Yahweh gave us his feast days, he gave us the seventh day Sabbath. This is just one of the magazines that I have written along with the Passover and um, many other magazines. And yet, when we read the scripture, the scripture says, prove all things and to hold fast to that which is true. Father Yahweh said his doctrine, his doctrine would fall like rain. So these magazines are doctrinal teachings. And so when we think about the Sabbath, the Sabbath through uh, the Bible, uh, Genesis through Revelation. And yet, you know, a lot of times people today are saying, we don't have to keep the Sabbath. Uh, he was raised on Sunday. Not so. He didn't die on a Friday. He died in the middle of the week. Man calls it Wednesday. And then he was in the mouth of, in the tomb, in the mouth of the earth for three nights and three days. Because when they buried him, it was getting ready to be dark time, which is also why Passover is supposed to be done at dark time. Not in the afternoon, not in the morning, not when we get married, not, none of those things. Passover is a solemn, is a solemn day. Father Yahweh gave it to us to uh, memorialize Yahshua, to recognize that just as he died, we all are going to die at least one time. And yet when we are raised up and are immersed in Yahshua's name, we want to be raised up and walk in righteousness. We want to walk in righteousness. And so if we're doing the things that should be done, then we will, listen, our minds will change, our hearts, our spirit will be converted, and we will do the things that Father Yahweh has called us to do. In Acts, you know, a lot of times, as I shared, sometimes people say, we don't have to do the Sabbath, that they didn't do the Sabbath in uh, New Testament. That's not true. When you really think about some of the things that even Shaul did, Shaul, for three Sabbaths straight, taught the people that were around him, not on Sunday, on the seventh day Sabbath, which man calls Saturday. Friday sunset to Saturday sunset is what the Sabbath is. And I'm saying that just so you can have a reference as to the time period that I'm talking about. And yet when we're looking at Father Yahweh's word, uh, sometimes people have said, well, the, um, some people are only given like four things to do. And yet, even though it says that in the scripture, if you think about what it's saying, then you will understand why these four principles were given. They were told to uh, not um, let me read it to you so you can read it for yourself. In Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 15, you know, um, Father Yahweh called our foreparents out, like I said, out of the land of Egypt. And many things, many things are happening today, even as many things happen when he was calling them out of the land of Egypt during that time. And yet, you know, you, you might see some storms and some, some hurricanes and all kinds of things happening. And yet, as Father Yahweh is calling us, he's calling us unto obedience, unto obedience, unto faith. And as we do what his word says to do, we got to find his commandments, his statutes, his ordinances, his judgments, and we must do them. And as I shared today, you know, um, we're not doing the animal sacrifices. That is the law system that Yahshua was born up under. And yet he said he would not eat the Passover again until it is fulfilled in his father's kingdom. And so as we look in this scripture, we have to see in verse 19 of Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15 and verse 19. This is what was spoken. It said, therefore, my sentence is that you trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to Yahweh. There are some Gentile people who are turning to Father Yahweh. And as he called the Hebrew people out, we have to be obedient even more because we are the ones who are supposed to give him his honor and his glory. And we have to see what he's saying for us to do. It says in verse 20, 
but that you write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols. We're not supposed to do any idolatry. Idolatry is when you are serving and worshiping someone other or something other than Father Yahweh. Father Yahweh is to be exalted in our mind, in our heart, and we are supposed to keep his commandments. It says, and from, pol from pollutions of idols and from fornication. Fornication comes in many forms. And so some of these sexual things that are happening in the world and yet even worshiping falsely is a fornication. So we don't want to do that. We want to worship Father Yahweh uprightly. And we want to do the things that Father Yahweh said to do. It says, and from things strangled. You know, a lot of times many people are coming away, even though we know how to eat clean. We know how, listen, in the scripture, in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14, Father Yahweh gives us what we are supposed to eat if we're going to eat flesh. And so if we think about that, then we are supposed to not strangle our whatever. When they killed the lamb, they slit his throat. It's almost time for me to close, but I'm going to talk over the graphics. And my ultimate prayer is that if you um, have any questions, that you can call 412-441-3894, 412-298-0139, or you can come and visit the Congregation of Yahweh at 342 Sylvania Avenue, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15210 in the Bell Suver area. And if you can't even come to where we are, ask Father Yahweh to show you someone who is teaching his word that you can go and fellowship with them and learn the truth. Many blessings to you. And yet I hope to see you all very shortly. As I said, I'm going to continue to read the scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, and from things strangled and from blood. And verse 21 says, For Moshe of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the congregations every Sabbath day. In the congregation, the assembly, the temple. You know, there was a temple made for Father Yahweh to be able to have his presence among the people. And yet, it says, Then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole congregation to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Shaul and Barnaba, namely Yada, surnamed Barnaba, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And so if you really think about um, going on the Sabbath and hearing Father Yahweh's word, starting at Torah, going into the uh, prophets, doing some of the uh, readings from uh, Psalms and Proverbs, and yet rightly dividing the things from what they call the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. And yet, as I said, Father Yahweh says, if my people who are called by my name, the people of Yahshua, the people of Yahweh, if they would um, humble themselves and pray and seek his face, and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. We have to recognize that our land is defiled over there. Father Yahweh is going to clean it up. He's going to make it look like the Garden of Eden. Things are going to grow there. The, the things that are, were there in the very beginning are going to be built again so that when it's time for us to go, hallelujah, to the kingdom of Yahweh, we will have a place where we can go. Father Yahweh put Jerusalem in the midst of the nations. And so we want to recognize that as we keep his commandments by faith in Yahshua, that we will and can be the people that Father Yahweh is calling for, and we must do things as it pleases him. You know, sometimes, I don't want to say this, sometimes people say, well, she's a woman. I want you to know this one thing. Father Yahweh gave the fivefold ministry in Ephesians chapter 4. 
And because he gave the fivefold ministry, then we have to recognize that it's not the pastors and the deacons only. It is the fivefold ministry that Father Yahweh has given. And so even in verse 11, it says, and he gave some shalak, I'm going to say shalak, or apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It says, for the perfecting of those who are set apart, it says of the saints, and for the work of the ministry, the good news must go all around the world before Yahshua comes. And so if we're doing what Father Yahweh says, then the body, the people, are going to be edified and Yahshua's body will be put in place. He is the head of the body, and yet, as even as he is the head of the body, there are, it's one body, but many members. And so as we're doing those things that are as it pleases Father Yahweh, then we will see many things come together. And the scripture goes on in verse 13 of Ephesians 4. It says, till we all come into the unity of the faith, one faith, one faith, to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, if we recognize that Yahshua came in his father's name, he came to do his father's will, then we also must realize that there are many things that we must do. We must be led by the Holy Spirit and we must know and keep Father Yahweh's law. Many parts of the law the moral law, the ceremonial law, the sacrificial, the civil law, the law of death, and the law of life and spirit in Yahshua the Messiah. Now, if we don't recognize that Father Yahweh has his laws that we need to keep, then that means we would not be being obedient to him. And if we're not obedient to the commandments that Father Yahweh has given, then that means, oops, we would not be able to, to go into his kingdom. There's not going to be anything that defiles. There's not going to be any disobedience in his kingdom. And so if we are to enter into his kingdom, then we have to be obedient to the commandments that he's given. Keep his feast days. Sabbath, seventh day Sabbath, once a week. We should go into worship. Not any day we want to rest. Once a week on the seventh day Sabbath, we should be fellowshipping one with the other and hearing Father Yahweh's word, learning what to do, how to do, when to do, where to do, who. And then, as it says, Passover, unleavened bread, because we have to become unleavened, no sin in us. And that's what the unleavened bread process is to happen for us, to help us to walk toward perfection. And then uh, realize that Yahshua is the wave sheep offering. Then realize that as we come to the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot, you know, we must be endowed with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, indwelling us. And we need to know when we receive the Holy Spirit. So many times people are told that they have, that they have received the Holy Spirit, but it's not according to Yahweh's word. And so a lot of people go around thinking they got something and they don't have anything. And so we want to read the word, see what it does say, and then be obedient to the commandments of Yahweh. I've spoken in times past, and I spoke a word. Father Yahweh said, Thus saith Yahweh, a sword is coming. It's time for each one to do the things that Father Yahweh is saying. He also said, Thus saith Yahweh, a storm is coming. Now, we see the chemical trails. Listen, they might cut this part out, but I want you to know when Yahweh's word is messed with and tampered with, Father Yahweh's vengeance is coming to those who do things against the word that he wants to be put out. And so we as a people must keep Yahweh's commandments, hallelujah, by faith in Yahshua the Messiah, realizing that we all must be forgiven of sin. We all must confess our sin. We all must be immersed in the name of Yahshua in the water, and we all must be immersed in the Holy Spirit to be able to be in the kingdom of Yahweh. We praise Father Yahweh for his goodness and for his mercy. For his mercy 
endures forever. We thank Father Yahweh for his extended grace. I pray that you have heard something and learned something that you may not have ever heard before. And I'm praying that as you continue to keep his commandments, that you will find your place of rest in Father Yahweh's kingdom and your name written in the Lamb's book of life and never being taken out. We praise Father Yahweh, hallelujah, for his goodness, hallelujah, for his love, for his joy, for his peace, for his goodness, for his gentleness upon his people. We thank Father Yahweh for being patient with us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. They that hunger, hunger and thirst for righteousness, for righteousness they shall be filled. Yahshua said that they that hunger, hunger and thirst for righteousness, for righteousness they shall be filled. Hallelujah. There are so many things that happen in one's life that causes them to wonder and to be in awe, to catch their breath, and to rethink what has been taught. When we reach a certain plateau and Father Yahweh is still not finished with us yet, it causes us and you to be thankful to know that you have been privileged to be part of his great family. Over the years, Many frustrations, questions, and decisions arise as to what is happening in our lives. We strive to continue to be humble and to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of Yahweh and thanking him for his outstretched arm. Father Yahweh truly sets up in the body as it pleases himself. While Father Yahweh is not a person and never will be, we thank him for Yahshua who died on the tree, shedding his blood to cleanse us from sin. Yahshua, our Savior, was born of a woman, born in the flesh by the Spirit of Yahweh, grew up to be the head of the body. And as the anointed of Yahweh, we thank him for his obedience to Father Yahweh in not doing his own will, but the will of Yahweh. I once questioned whether a woman could hold various offices and would say to Father Yahweh, if it's not your will, then don't let it happen. As we understand that Father Yahweh must draw, John 6, 44. He must call us, Romans 8, 28. He must predestinate us, Romans 8, 29. And bring us uh, and justify us, Romans 8, 30. And glorify us, Romans 8, 30. Having been taught, then... Um, by the Holy Spirit, John 6, 45, and bring them to Yahshua, John 6, 65. When we recognize that Father Yahweh teaches us, he gives us all the commands that we need and anything that we don't have, if it's for us to have, he will give them to us. We as believers have a great work to continue as a great work has been done in us. We have heard the word of Yahweh and understand that we are sinners who needed to be saved and delivered. And as we have to come to know the good news is the mystery of Yahshua or of Yahweh Shua. Many have heard of our heavenly father Yahweh, but did not know about Yahshua. Since there is no J in Hebrew, Greek, Russian, or Latin, and the J being made from an I, and only in the English, we all had to stay, say the name that was given, and we recognized that those names did not match. Yahweh and Yahshua go together, or Yahweh Shua, not Yahweh and Jesus as we were taught. We don't want to do Zeus worship, and we don't want to be in idolatry. How is the body set up by Father Yahweh? Everyone that is saved and delivered by hearing the word of Yahweh must and has to make a decision to believe and to obey. Our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, causes our faith to increase as we hear his word. And our faith causes us to seek for Father Yahweh's kingdom and his righteousness that comes to us by Yahshua HaMashiach. Yahshua HaMashiach, Matthew 1, 
23 and 25, Daniel 9, 25 and 26, John 1, 41 and 4, 25, and Matthew chapter 6, 33 says, But seek you first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yahshua said in John 7, 38, He that believes on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Proverbs 18, 4 says, the words of man's mouth are as deep waters and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. Isaiah 12, 3, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon dry ground. And I will pour my spirit upon your seed and my blessing upon your offspring, Isaiah 44, 3. As we obey the commandments of Yahweh, he begins to fill us with his spirit, and as he quickens our mortal bodies, that the same spirit that is in, with the same spirit that is in us. Father Yahweh will do his will, for he puts in us the will and to do. We do nothing in and of ourselves. Yahshua scolded our four parents many times for their unbelief. The Hebrew people were given the commandments, the statutes, the ordinances, and the precepts. May Yahweh bless you as you continue to study and read the word of Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 412-441-3894. 412-441-3894. May Yahweh bless you. Shalom.